So, um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, developing or s how to start developing for mixed reality and what is mixed reality and how to start developing for mixed reality with HoloLenses and what this device is about. But let me first introduce myself a little bit. I'm Rafał Legensz. I'm from Poland. You can find me on Twitter at Rafek. Uh, I'm a software engineer at the company called Solid Brains, a software house in Krakow, Poland. And I'm, for last, like, one year, I'm mainly focused on whole lenses and augmented reality. I speak with uh, different businesses. Uh, I create different proof of concepts for this technology. I'm, try to com I'm trying to convince some businesses that this technology is something we they would like to invest in, uh, that this is the future. And I'm actually trying to show that it, the technology, I mean, augmented reality and augmented reality on goggles uh, can actually improve your performance, can actually earn you money, etc. So that's my main focus and that's something I'm focused on uh, within the company I work for. Also, I am a conference organizer. I organize a conference called DEFCONF. It's in Krakow. Uh, we're doing it since 2011, so it's eight years now. Uh, it's in September, so if you would like to visit Krakow, uh, that's a good opportunity to visit the conference as well. And also, I try to be a conference speaker, so whenever I think I have something interesting to say, I apply to conferences, and hence I'm here, for example. And I talked a lot about uh, HoloLenses during last year, and Microsoft decided to award me with MVP award, uh, so I guess that's that's cool thing to do. Okay, anyway. Uh, around HoloLenses and, in general, VR and AR are a pretty common thing. There are, there are a lot of discussions around it. There are a lot of articles on the internet that VR is the future, AR is the future, or whatever. So what I would like to do in this slide is to differentiate, to explain what is the actual difference between those two technologies or those, t uh, those experiences, because there are still a lot of confusion out there. So VR uh, is, stands for virtual reality, which is basically the experience where the user puts the headset headset on, and it's um, it's it it occludes uh, the user's vision, and the user is fully immersed into digital environment. So everything the user sees is uh, fully synthetic, and those devices, those ex experiences, uh, are designed in a way so that the user's mind is being tricked into thinking that the real world basically doesn't exist. Right? How many of you have tried before, like Oculus Rift of HTC Vive? Like half of you. So you pr already probably know how immersive, how convincing the experience is. For those who uh, hasn't tried it yet, uh, I strongly recommend trying. You probably can you can do it in plenty of places right now. And if not, you can also see on the videos on on YouTube uh, people people trying VR and how they freak out when something external, uh, from the external world uh, touching them or something like that. It means this experience is really, really convincing and the user really thinks that the real world doesn't exist. On the other hand, we have AR, which stands for augmented reality. Uh, as the name says, we are augmenting, ag augmenting the world here. So usually uh, those experiences are on mobile devices. That's the most common way they're um, delivered right now on our mobile phones or tablets. So uh, those experiences usually use the camera lenses of our phones and whatever the users see on the screen, uh, I mean, whatever the lens, lenses see, it's being displayed on the screen and then some digital content is being overlaid uh, on that um, on that screen. Sometimes AR devices come in the form of uh, goggles or glasses, like HoloLenses, so they are more, more fancy than, I mean, the, the um, experience is more immersive. So where, uh, where are HoloLenses? Are they VR or AR? Or AR? But because this is the question I usually get from people. So if we would, if we would think about our world like, uh, like there is a physical world or uh, and the digital uh, digital full digital world uh, where the physical world is the, the one we interact with on our regular daily basis and digital world is like everything when everything is rendered we have the 
whole spectrum of experiences that we can get between those two, I mean, spanning those two extremes. And those experiences depend on the kind of device that we are using on and the kind of software that we are using on those devices. So most of AR devices, they lay very near this physical reality. That's because most of them, as I already mentioned, runs on our, on our mobile phones or tablets. So the user isn't fully immersed into this uh, experience. The user is still fully aware that the, the, the physical environment is there, is around him or her. And the digital augmentation only occurs on that, on that screen. So it's not very convincing. Some of them devices are a little bit more sophisticated. So for example, some kind of um, uh, glasses like Google glasses or uh, any other, uh, or some phones with, uh, with uh, some more, um, some better sensors, for example. Uh, and on the other hand, on the digital reality end of the spectrum, we have uh, all the VR experiences er and uh, devices uh, that we have on the, on the market. That means that whenever we are using VR, we are completely not aware of physical reality. So digital reality is the center of the, of the experience. So HoloLenses are somewhere here. This is basically the, the device that is an augmented reality device, but the design, the hardware that is inside, the, w the, the thing that it is a head-mounted uh, display as well, it all, um, it all, co all combined gives a better and more convincing experience to the user. Everything that the user see, well, that depends on the, on the application actually, but usually all the users see uh, can seamlessly blend with the environment, can interact with our physical things as well. So that this, uh, this immersion effect in, in HoloLenses is way better than on any other AR platform out there on the market. So that's why it spans a little bit more of this, uh, of this spectrum. Because this digital content that is delivered on this device uh, is more convincing to the user and that it actually is, appears in that physical world. On the other hand, it's worth to mention that what Microsoft did uh, recently, which is mid-October last year, they released a bunch of mixed reality headsets. Those are regular VR headsets like Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, but the difference uh, with the other ones is that they employ um, a little bit of technology from, uh, from HoloLenses, which means inside-out tracking. That means that those new VR headsets, they do not require external, external sensors for, uh, movement, for tracking the head and controller's movement. So they are easier to set up and they are easier to use than, uh, than Oculus or uh, Vive, for example. And also they work on the same platform as uh, HoloLens, which means Windows 10. And that what, that's what is um, what's mixed reality and that's why Microsoft nowadays uh, that's why they use Windows Mixed Reality term a lot because um, they're trying to create one, one big common platform for or VR and AR experiences which, uh, which they named Mixed Reality. And what Microsoft is trying to do, uh, I think what, the, what they're trying to do here is that they're trying to fill the whole spectrum with the devices or one ultimate device that will be able to deliver all kind of experiences to the user. So HoloLens, what's, uh, what's that? That's, that's this device. How many of you have already seen this, the device? Not many of you. How so uh, for most of you, it's, it's a very new thing, but it's, um, well, it's been announced I think two or three years ago, I think it was 2015 when they were announced. So it's quite a while. Uh, it's a device made by Microsoft and it was released in mid 2016. I think the first wave of devices was shipped to developers in June 2016. So it's been a while uh, since they are on the market. And actually there are a lot of companies and lots of developers that are um, leveraging this technology and they're delivering and real apps for that and they are solving uh, some businesses cases or uh, just uh, improving performance at some companies with that. And what else I can say, it's an 
it's an independent independent uh, device, so it, it's untethered. You don't need any cable or any external computer to, to run it or to power it in any way. Uh, so it's it's a PC desktop in there, right? Self-contained. So this is a big plus because that's the only thing you have to take with you. It runs Windows 10, which might be good or not, depends if you like the system, but what it means is that it's, a, it's not any closed system or anything exotic, it's just Windows 10. And we program applications there as we would be programming for Windows 10, so basically we could use universal Windows platform or just Unity uh, for uh, anything 3D. Okay, so whenever the user puts the headset on, it's not occluded. It might seem as, it, as it's occluded, but we can actually see through, through it. So we see our uh, physical world through it. And we are firing, we fire up the applications, any application, and then all of a sudden we have some digital content rendered around us, which we can interact with or we can place whenever in our environment. And it looks like this. So we have to have this device on to see the holograms. That's, that, that's, that's how we name the 3D objects that are being displayed in our application. We uh, name them holograms in this case. So there are lots of scenarios which I, I'm going to tell a little bit more, more later, but this looks basically like this. One of the coolest feature, uh, features of HoloLenses is that, as you can see here, there are two people wearing HoloLenses, is that we can have an application that application that can be fired on uh, on two whole lenses or more and they can communicate with each other like any multiplier game i would say because the mechanism under the hood is the same and those users can see the very same holographic world around them so they can easily collaborate on some content and they can uh, work on a on a on a piece of uh, 3d thing being rendered be in front of them so this is pretty cool and this is what most of the companies are asking for nowadays when it comes to uh, HoloLenses, collaboration. But let's talk a little bit more about uh, hardware. So to make all this magic happen, uh, we need a lot of sensors, of course. So uh, right in front of, in, in, in front of it, uh, on our forehead, we have a bunch of, bunch of whoops, sorry. We have a bunch of sensors. Uh, to make long story short, we can say that this is an enhanced Kinect device being attached here to the glasses, but it's a little bit more than that. We have four environmental understanding cameras. Those cameras are responsible for scanning users' environments. So they gather information about where are the surfaces around the user. I mean, where is the floor, where, is, where are walls, where is the ceiling, where are the chairs, etc. So they, they scan the environment all the time. We have RGB camera. Uh, we have mixed mixed capture mixed reality capture sensor which allows us for streaming whatever the user see to the to 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 an external computer uh, or make uh, or record videos or making uh, in, um, screenshots also we have four uh, four microphones which are there for voice commands and there are four of them because the device has to make sure that the voice command comes from the user itself not not the person standing uh, next to it, and there are some other sensors like depth sensor or um, ambient light sensor. The, th the the difference here is uh, when it comes to Kinect, because that's that's the most common question as well when it comes to sensors. Lots of developers ask if we can get a raw uh, stream of data from a depth sensors, depth sensors, which was possible with Kinect, and with in this case Microsoft uh, didn't uh, they didn't uh, get us access to that. So we can't use raw dev, uh, dev sensor uh, data. The other thing is to display those convincing holograms. We need a set of uh, really cool uh, displays in front of our eyes. And to be honest, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't delved into this particular technology. How are, how are they done? And this is not important hint. What, what, what's important here is that they can render 3D objects in a way that you can feel if they are near you or further from you. And uh, the, the resolutions is, resolution is pretty okay as well because there are two HD engines, one per each eye, which means it's, it's 72p per eye. 
The other thing is the brain, which is holographic processing unit. This is a coprocessor specially designed for HoloLenses. And this is a, mm, the processor that processes all the sensory data that, that comes from all the sensors. So all the uh, environmental understanding data, all the gesture recognition or voice recognition all comes through this and then it's being transferred to, to a regular processors, processor. When it comes to the rest of the hardware, there is two gigs of RAM, 60 gigs of SSD storage, mm -hmm. there's Bluetooth, there's Wi-Fi. Uh, there are of course batteries that last for two, or three hour, two to three hours of active use. And the regular processor, which is uh, 32 bits, which is um, which might be surprising because like most of the most of devices we have, uh, mobile devices we have right now are usually 64 bits, but in this case is 32 bits. So, how do we use? How do we interact with our applications? I mean, there is no mouse, there is no keyboard, so we have to have a way to interact with whatever we see. There is something which is called GGV into paradigm, which means gaze, gesture, and voice. <laughs> Those are main, main ways to interact and uh, issue commands to whatever we see. So gaze is, um, this is very similar to uh, how it's done in VR. So basically we have a cursor in front of our eyes and this cursor follow, follow our gaze. So. Um, it doesn't follow our uh, pupils, it follows our gaze. So we need to uh, actually move our head to move the cursor. So that's, that's, that's our cursor. So we can imagine this as a laser being uh, attached to our forehead. So whenever, whenever, there is, um, whenever we're looking at something in a, with a head movement, the cursor moves, moves with our head. The other th thing is uh, our gestures. We point some things with a cursor, with our head movement, and then if something is focused uh, based on where our cursor is or where our gaze is, we can issue commands. And one, one of the way to issue commands is by gesture. So um, the, the sensors that are being here tracks our hands. They, can, they, knows when, they know when, when the hand is in the area where the gestures can be detected, and then they can detect gestures. So for developers, there's basically one gesture to handle, which is this. This, this means air tap. This is like catching a, a fly or, I don't know, pinching. Uh, and this is the only gestures that we can handle in our application. There, there are no custom gestures. We can't program anything uh, custom, which is a good thing in my opinion, because uh, just imagine like every application you would run, you would have to, you would have, to have a tutorial about what what gestures are available in the application. And first you would have to learn all of them and then you would be able to use the application. So that makes sense in some case, uh, I mean, in most of the cases, of course. So based on this gesture, we have uh, several gestures derived, I would say. Uh, the one is a uh, hold gesture, which is like half air tap. And the other one is manipulation or navigation gesture, which is also like hold gesture. And then we can move our hand and then we can just track the hand movement and that allows us for uh, different interactions like for example rotations or resizing. Uh, the other way to uh, issue commands to our application is by voice. So basically we can program voice commands. We, the only uh, language available here and um, supported is English, uh, but it's, um, it makes things a, a little bit easier when we can just look at something and just say something and something will happen. Okay, so based on that, as I mentioned before, there are lots of companies that already uh, are leveraging this technology. Uh, lots of things are happening on the market. And just to name a few, few examples. And I mean, there are way, way more than that. You can Google it, you can Google HoloLens, manufacturing HoloLens, medical apps, HoloLens, whatever. And you, could, you can probably find lots of examples examples in and every industry. So this is uh, Citibank. They made a trading application for the traders. So basically they can visualize uh, trading info uh, in real time and then they can um, manipulate those data, interact with them uh, in that holographic world. And they can share actually whatever they see, they can share to other user with a tablet or computer. 
Ford recently announced that they're, they're uh, employing HoloLens to their design processes so they can uh, talk about uh, new designs of their cars or uh, design them with, with this device. And this is where the collaboration thing is happening as well. Schneider Electric, uh, they are doing um, application for service workers. So whenever the service worker approaches some, uh, some piece of machinery that he or she is going to do some maintenance, maintenance work on, uh, there can be like a instructions being displayed in front of the eyes and literally they can show uh, steps to perform on the machine. Uh, to, to complete the task. And for all of those, you can actually find the YouTube videos and see how those applications work. So uh, this, this is, I think, one of the most common scenarios, maintenance and manufacturing, where uh, apps for service workers or field workers are uh, delivered for whole lenses so that they can perform better in those tasks. Tyson Group. The company that specializes in creating uh, elevators, they also have a, an application for uh, service workers. So whenever the worker needs to do any maintenance work on an, on the, on the elevator, uh, it, he or she can get lots of contextual information in front, just in front of the eyes, like manuals, video tutorials, or video manuals, or or they can perform a Skype call or just see uh, in large. Uh, 3D model of an object that he or she is going to perform some maintenance task on. But any other, I mean, there are other experiences uh, also. Uh, th those experiences, uh, they don't show one of the coolest feature of HoloLenses, which is spatial mapping. This is, uh, this is what happens when we uh, put the data gathered by uh, uh, environmental um, understanding cameras into use. I know this is uh, this doesn't say much, but if you blur your eye, blur your vision for, for a while, you will see it. This is a model of the room. This is a mesh uh, of the scanned scanned location. So as I mentioned before, whole lens and um, environmental understanding cameras they scan user environment. They gather that data about all the surfaces that are around the user. I mean, not all uh, usually those surfaces that are three meters, I mean, up to three meters in front of the user. Uh, so to scan the whole room, we have to walk around a lot. But from the moment the whole lenses are turned on, they uh, start scanning the environment. And we can't stop it. Well, we can't disable whole lenses. We can't turn, and turn them off. But whenever they turn on, uh, they scan. So it doesn't matter if there is any application running on, th on them or not. We do not program it. It's there. It's on an operational system level. Uh, and based on the location, whole lenses, uh, they detect where they are based on some location features. And then, then, then they update the, the model, underlying model of this location all the time. So for example, if I would just turn them on, and even if they would be just laying like that, they would gather whatever they see in front of them. And this is cool. Uh, we as the developers, we can make use of this data. Uh, we can program against a, a specific API to, to get to this data and create the models. And that's one of this, the, this, this model. This is the very simple application when, where basically I visualized um, whatever, whatever is being gathered by the, by, by, by the device. So whenever there was a surface, I just rendered the, the white grid and that's it, right? So, for example, for this room, it would be basically the, the model of this room, but whenever we have a surface, it, it would be visualized as this mesh. This is not very exciting. This is only for visualization that the, the, the room is, is scanned. But the more, more exciting thing is that with all those uh, meshes, with, all the, all, all the, with the model of the location, we also get colliders. And colliders, is, colliders are... Um, are, are objects that are invisible and uh, what they provide is they provide uh, all the physics mechanics to our, to our applications. So we can imagine that whenever we have a surface, like a real surface in our physical world, we have a nicely aligned uh, collider within our application. So whenever we have some 3D object in our application, we would drop it on the floor it would hit the collider that is being aligned with the floor. So the effect would be like we have a virtual ball that 
bounces of the physical uh, physical floor and that's where uh, this immer immersion is uh, elevated to a level that is really convincing so those are examples of free games available for uh, for uh, holenses i mean that those are not all games that are available but three most advanced ones that they show uh, how to leverage the, the device to to the full extent and we can see in those games i mean i really recommend playing them it's young conquer fragments and robber raid so in one of it we can have like uh, virtual characters that that basically they run on our physical floor jump on our bed on our uh, table they fight with each other they bounce on the floor or, or walls uh, fragments is is the game where your room becomes a crime scene so you have to find clues which are hidden actually hidden in your room you have holographic characters uh, coming into your room and they can actually sit on your physical sofa this is really convincing stuff and robberate is about an alien invasion you have aliens that are drilling through your walls and attack you and those damages to real wars are pretty convincing as well this is this is this is one of the best games as well so if you'd like to try one of those just just uh, find me after the lecture i have devices myself you can try it okay i have to speed up because i, I have some code to show you as well so to develop things to this device uh, we usually use unity and visual studio and that's well that's because it's microsoft thing so we have to have visual studio here apparently and c sharp under the hood but yeah but unity is the most common one it you don't have to use Unity. You can have you can use C++ if you like, and uh, directly Direct X. Uh, you can use uh, Unreal Engine as well. But the vast majority of community gathered around this uh, around this technology and Microsoft itself, uh, they support Unity, and that's the that's that's basically the technology that you would like to use because I mean, in other way you would be. Uh, you, you probably buy your own basically on the internet using uh, anything else so we use unity for setting up our scene to program to to put together 3d objects we use uh, visual studio for writing scripts and building and deploying the application there is one problem with unity there are a lot of versions that are releasing new versions like crazy recently and apparently universal windows platform is not there main focus so from version to version they they break stuff so if you would like to uh, start developing for HoloLens just don't go with the newest version of Unity you have to go with one like 10 versions ago because uh, nowadays whenever uh, Unity releases new 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 update they usually break something that used to work and introduce some fix to uh, to uh, to something that used to uh, not works and vice versa and so that's pretty insane insane nowadays and there are lots of patch releases as well and there is a beta release as well so th just just don't go with the newest one because you would have like lots of problems lots of problems seriously there are uh, on a whole and whole developers slack uh, there are lots of discussions around that and actually we are wondering if, if unity even care about that but well that's that's some issue that probably going is going to be solved anyway and to speed up our development we have two open source libraries uh, released by microsoft one is mixed reality toolkit it used to be called uh, holo toolkit and this is just a bunch of um, a bunch of scripts and ready uh, and objects or assets for unity that uh, wrap some unity stuff and deliver them to us in in a more digestive way i would say i mean all the developers that started developing uh, Holo, uh, HoloLens applications at the beginning, they of course they noticed some patterns in what they were doing, so they just wrapped it up and released as a uh, as the as the open source library. And it's still well maintained and it's uh, it's being updated all the time, so it's pretty cool. And the other one, Mixed Reality Design Labs, it's it's also open source uh, library with uh, well, they're focusing on components, and there are two applications there as well, like like games, which is open source, and you can just download them and see how things should be done. You can treat them as as a reference thing to do your stuff, and there are some 
components, ready components there as well, like buttons for uh, for AR or bounding boxes, etc. All of them are available at Git on GitHub, so you can find and download them from there. Okay, demo time, I guess. Are there any questions to whatever I've said so far? If not, I will just fire up Unity and we'll show you how to create um, how to create simple application. Oops, I have to. Wow, can I switch to mirror? Okay, let's try. Okay, so Unity, it looks like this. Have you ever seen this IDE? Okay, so it's, it's, it's probably something new for you. Uh, how to zoom it? Okay, uh, so this is Unity, one of the newest ones, and that's why uh, I have lots of problems with that as well. But uh, it looks, well, it looks very similar to um, other ideas for like 3D design or, or where we create 3D scenes or animations. Uh, but if you're not familiar with that, I'm going to just quickly go through the, um, through the, through, through, through the how, how ID looks like and what's where. So here, uh, uh, the main thing is the scene view. That's where we put up our scene. That's where we put the objects. And that's where we construct uh, the, the, the whole experience. Uh, this is the hierarchy view. That's basically all the objects that are in our scene. They are, they are here um, aligned with some, some kind of hierarchy. Here's project view. That's where we have all our assets that we are using in our solution that's here and here is an inspector pane on the on the right that's uh, a pane for um, whenever whenever we have some some object in our hierarchy or or project pane uh, selected selected we have properties here being displayed okay so that's that was long story short um, what i wanted to show you is how to literally how to create like a hello world application which is uh, using mixed reality toolkit so that you will see that to deliver really simple um, really simple application like rendering some kind of an object in front of the user eyes and placing it on the floor detecting the floor and placing it on the floor it's really uh, really easy and what's more it's usually what um, what businesses usually uh, ask for at the very beginning. So whenever I'm, I'm talking with any business, any new business, any uh, manager at some companies about this technology and how we can, uh, how we can start working on it and, um, and um, start solving some companies' uh, problems with that, we usually start with a like simple proof of concept. Usu I usually get some kind of a CAD project or some, of, um, some piece of machinery from them and I have to just display it or, or place it on the floor or whatever or, or just resize it or just make it, uh, make it rotate or whatever like that. Just to give them understanding how the model would look like uh, on those glasses and then we iterate uh, over this kind of simple application. So, um, to start things, um, as I said, we're going to use Mixed Reality Toolkit. I already imported it. It's under the name Holo Toolkit here. Uh, it's, uh, you, you just download the package from GitHub and just import it in Unity like, um, like this. Import package, custom package, and that's it. I'm not going to uh, show you uh, how, basically how, how to do it right now because that takes a time and we don't want to waste it right now. But it's, um, it's imported. And, and right now, uh, I have all the components that are in the packages available to, to my application. I have, um, I have them organized in folders, which are named uh, after uh, the purpose of those components, right? So if I would like to, uh, if I would like to program uh, gestures or gaze or cursor, I just go to input folder and just grab some ready-made objects for uh, for those interactions. But first, 
I have to configure, I have to tell Unity that I'm going to create wholeness application here so that uh, Unity knows how to build the application and that it has to target universal Windows platform. So under mixed reality uh, many, I have, um, I have configure, apply mixed reality project settings. So what I have to say is that I'm targeting universal Windows platform, I'm enabling mixed reality, I'm building direct for direct 3D and I have .NET scripting backend. I'm just applying it. And it should work. Okay. That's all. In my build settings, whoops. I have to add my scene. So whatever I'm designing right now, I, I, I'm adding to the build. And also, as we are going to use um, as we are going to use our um, special special that data gathered by uh, Holonesses, I need to ask for a permission. It's like asking for like internet connectivity permission on mobile phones or anything like that. I need to ask for permission, uh, give me access to special percep perception data. That's a basic um, basic configuration. Now I can just putting pu start putting things together to um, to achieve the effect. So, camera. Camera is a component that uh, that gives us, um, that shows us, uh, I mean, that's the target where all the rendering will happen. So whatever the camera sees will be the end result that the user will see and uh, will have rendered. The default camera is not uh, appropriate for HoloLens, so I just delete it. And there's a ready-made component in HoloToolkit, which is, which is called HoloLens Camera. Uh, which is well suited for whole lenses. I'm just dropping it here. I'm gonna use uh, gestures because we what we what we're gonna do in this application is just we're we're gonna load some external model and we'll just uh, write a script for like placing it on the floor and rotating it as simple as that. So we're gonna use gestures. So there's input manager for gestures. I'm gonna place it here. We would like to have a cursor, which which are uh, done here. Cursor is for visualizing gaze, so whenever we'll be looking at something, we would like to have a little dot or a ring rendered at the very end. And as simple as that, without writing any single line of code, I have I have my simple application, which I think I can run. That's it. You see, we have we have a cursor. Uh, this cursor is a blurred blurred dot which means we are not hitting any, any object because we don't have any object here, uh, but we are visualizing our gaze here. And with the whole toolkit components, I have a, um, I have a support for a keyboard within, uh, within Unity, so I can use WASD uh, keys to navigate and to, to move within that application and mouse for looking and, and creating and issuing gestures. So, the whole toolkit is really, really handy thing so that we, we do not have to uh, leave uh, Unity Editor for debugging. Uh, okay, now we would like to make use of our special data gathered by the by the HoloLens. So I need a component for uh, for spatial mapping. Oh, come on. Which is called spatial mapping. And, uh, well, my computer, it doesn't have sensors. It doesn't know what room we are in. So we have to provide some kind of a model of the room for, uh, for our debugging purposes. So I have a model of the room because um, what you can do with HoloLens is you can scan a room. You can um, get to HoloLens with, your IP, with IP address of the HoloLens, I mean, through the browser. And basically you can download the model of the room that you're in like download the, the model and then you can import it in Unity and it will serve as a, as a model for the, for the application. But that's only for debugging purposes. So I have one of those already done and I can import it. It's under default room and And I'm just dropping it here. And bam, I have, I have my room here. Can you see it? That's, that's uh, 
that's a simulation of a room. That's basically a 3D object. It, that's all. That's nothing special. That's that's only a bunch of triangles uh, that looks like a model of the room. So right now we can see we can see our cursor, which is uh, here. It, it's now a ring, not not a not a blurred dot. That means we're hitting some surface. We're hitting some colliders, uh, so that the user experience is is better here. So that the user knows where exactly we are looking at. So. Now, we would like to look at the floor or whatever and uh, create an, uh, I mean, issue an air tab gesture and then we'd like to render some things. So first, uh, I'm going to import some object. I have created a forklift um, object for this demo. So I'm just, I'm just going to import it. <coughs> OK. So uh, let's create that script. Um, to have scripts uh, running within our Unity application, we have to have some object to attach the script in onto it. So this script for like placing placing a thing in our uh, environment uh, isn't bound to anything particular, any physical object. I mean, any virtual object in our application. So I'm just I'm just going to create empty object, uh, empty object here, and I'm just going to name it. Um, oops system and having this object uh, selected I can add component to this object and I will just name this component uh, placement behavior and that's going to, going to be a script having this done I can edit the script by double clicking it and it should open me visual studio that's right <coughs> Okay, I would like it bigger. Okay, can you see it? Is it good or bigger? Make it like that. Okay. So we have to uh, add the possibility to uh, to handle the gesture. So having mixed reality toolkit uh, in place, uh, we can just program against some uh, interfaces instead of going through Unity API and uh, subscribing to some uh, some events etc uh, mixed reality toolkit uh, nicely wrapped this this for us and to handle uh, air tab gesture we simply have to implement i input click handler oops and this interface has only one method to implement, which is on input click. And this is going to be invoked whenever uh, the device detects that we're doing this, right? Uh, as we do not have anything on our scene uh, and we do not um, point at any particular object when we're performing this gesture, we need to say to the application that this gesture is kind of a global gesture so that uh, it's, it's not based on some focused object. To do that, we just need to tell input manager that this object this object that we are programming the empty game object with this script which is game object uh, is going to be a global listener the funny thing is that lots of thing, things in uh, unity and mixed reality toolkit are uh, singletons so that's uh, if you're an enterprise developer that might be something unusual here and we're trying as enterprise developers we're usually trying to uh, avoid this but in Unity, we have lots of lots of singletons. So that's something you have to <laughs> get used to whenever programming uh, for Unity. So okay, so whenever we're showing, showing an air tab gesture, we would like to detect if we're looking at the floor. Uh, and uh, if lo we're looking at the floor, then render something. So uh, first, we need to get information about where actually we're looking. So there is this one, uh, there is one, uh, one uh, handy component for that. Uh, which is called focus manager of course it's a it's a singleton but with this focus manager that's a component from uh, mixed reality toolkit get focus details we can get focus details where where uh, of um, of the user's gaze so based on gaze whatever gaze manager is giving us so whatever the user is looking at 
just give us this point whenever we are crossing some some virtual object in our case that's going to be the special mesh right so we can then if we're having if we do have the details about this point where our gaze crosses the the special mesh then we can get all the coordinates and normal vectors from that point so now if we're looking on the floor or anything else uh, any other uh, mesh we have to detect if it's a floor so if it's a if it's a flat thing so we can get uh, we can check if the normal vector of this um, of whenever we are looking at is uh, how how much it deviates from the up vector up normal vector and based on that angle we can say if something is a floor or not so what i'm going to quickly uh, do here is um, i'm going to calculate that angle angle from normal which means give me the focus details normal, which is normal in a point where we're looking at and um, vector free up, so normal vector pointing up. So if this, if this angle is like uh, less than, for example, 15 degrees, let's say, uh, that's only for demo purposes, then we can say, okay, it's a floor, okay? So, if it's a floor, we can instantiate our our four clip model. That's uh, that happens with uh, instantiate method from Unity, and that's gonna be four clipped, and that's where I will show you how dependency injection works in Unity. It's with public fields, and I will show you in a second. Okay, so we're inst instantiating uh, forklift and then we are uh, changing its position to whenever we are looking. So whenever we are hitting that, 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 that floor, that's, that's the point where we would like to render this, this hologram. And as simple as that, I hope it will work, uh, it, should, it should appear uh, on the floor where we, we're looking at. We would like to also disable this special mesh so that we don't have those triangles around us. Special. Uh, draw visual mesh is false. And also after the, the event is, is handled, we can, uh, we have to tell uh, our event pipeline that we used this event so that it, it's not bubbled uh, further. So as simple as that, we also have to uh, define this forklift here. Um, and given that, it should update here pretty soon. Okay, so I updated my script and uh, and fill in, in the properties pane, I can see the forklift uh, thing here. And that's uh, every public field on our script will be displayed here. And that's our dependency injection mechanism. So I can literally, I can drag, uh, I can drag my prefab, my forklift prefab from here to here. And that's where the magic happened with uh, dependency injection. So now, whenever I would look in the floor, oops. Bam, I clicked on the floor and now I have my forklift on the floor, right? Whatever is black here will be transparent on HoloLenses. So, uh, I don't know how much time left I have. Probably, probably it's, is it done already? Okay, so uh, can I just show you one more script? It's, it's, a, it's a lunch, it's like five minutes, okay, okay. So I would like to add one more script for like rotating the, uh, the, the forklift. So I would like to, I would have to uh, add the script to this, this object that I'm using, which is forklift model here. So I'm, I'm just selecting this, 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 uh, this model here and I'm adding a component, which is, which is a script as well. And I'm just gonna name it forklift behavior. And we're editing it. Come on. Okay. I have new script. 
this is uh, attached, uh, it's, uh, it's being attached to my uh, forklift model. Uh, so I would like to handle manipulation gestures. So I, I would like to be able to click on it and just move my hand like on the X axis and then make it rotate on the Y axis so it rotates like that. So for, for that, I need to implement an eye manipulation uh, handler. And manipu manipulation handler uh, gives us ability to handle um, handle uh, our hand movement. We have a bunch of met methods to implement here, like manipulation cancelled, which we do not bother with right now. Manipulation completed, we do not bother with that right now as well. Started also, we do not bother with that. We have manipulation updated. That's where we will be getting the delta uh, value of our hand movement. And that's that's what uh, what what um, is in what's interested for us. So here, we're getting delta of our hand movement, which is in event data, cumulative data. And based on that delta, we would like to rotate our, our model. Our model is something that this script is attached to. So under our transform uh, field, we have transform of our model. So we can uh, rotate this transform on a particular axis. We would like to uh, uh, rotate, it in, uh, rotate it on a y axis. So uh, x axis will be zero. Now we, would we have to give some value for y, y rotation, which will be delta x. So our x of our uh, hand, hand movement will would, um, uh, would be translated into y rotation for the, for the object. I have to place it mi minus here because of the values that are being given to rotate it in the correct way. And that's pretty much it. Let's see now. Okay, I'm missing one thing. Uh, my uh, cursor disappears when I'm looking on, on the object because the object doesn't have a collider. So what I need to do uh, is to find my, I need to find my object. And I need to add collider to it, mesh collider. And that's that's it. Mm. Okay, now now uh, the the model has a collider in it, so my gaze collides with the object, and I can see my cursor uh, being sticking to the with, with the object. And now I can just grab it and I can rotate it, as simple as that. So as you can see, with a very little amount of code, like two lines here and several lines here, we can create a very simple demo. But when you would create something like that and put it on your boss's or your client's head and show that this is something real and you can interact with this stuff and this stuff actually is in front of you, that's really convincing and that's, that's where lots of interesting discussion can, can start. Uh, I would deploy it to, to uh, HoloLens, but I, I actually have it deployed. So if you would like to see it, you can approach me and I can show you this application on the HoloLens and I can show you any other. Uh, so now it's time for questions, I guess, if there is any. If not, just, just approach me after the session. I can show you some more within the device. Okay, I guess everyone is waiting for lunch. <laughs> Cheers, thank you then.